have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Come on, everybody, begin to clap your hands and let's praise the Lord. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning time. Yeah, yeah. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartache. This is the day I've got joy. I've got joy.
And now it's time for our faithful financial moments with Sister Sharon Richard. This is Sharon Richard with your faithful financing moment. In Luke chapter 16, verse 11, Jesus asks us, since you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Most Christians do not realize that their relationship with God is impacted by how they handle the money already entrusted to them by God. Yet, when you explore this question, clearly Jesus makes clear that how we handle what has been entrusted to us is critical to receiving true riches. God calls us to be honest, even in small details. No matter how much or little money that we have, if we are untrustworthy with our money, we will be unfit to handle the true riches of God's kingdom. Jesus knew that money has the power to take God's place in our lives. As you read further in Luke chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus indicates that no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. How can you tell if you have become a slave to money? Number one, do you think and worry about it frequently? Number two, do you give up doing what you should do in order to make more money? Number three, is it hard for you to give money away? Number four, are you in debt? If you have answered yes to any of these questions, there is a possibility that you have allowed money to interfere with your relationship with God. In prayer, ask the Lord to reveal to you the areas in which you have shown more loyalty to money than to him and ask for guidance in staying loyal to him and him alone. God's true riches is what we all must strive for. Financial wealth, sure, it promises power and control, but often it cannot deliver. Great fortunes can be made and lost overnight, and no amount of money can provide health, happiness, or, more importantly, eternal life. God's true riches include the blessings that come from a strengthened relationship with God. God's promise for joy when we are in his presence and his promise for peace when we are directed by his spirit are among the true riches that will abound when we are able to build a relationship with God at the highest level. This is Sharon Richard with your faithful financing moment. Up next, Nina Taylor with Your Gospel News, followed by the Pastor's Corner with my husband, Elder Ernest Richard Jr., Apostle Irvin Whitlow, Apostle Vincent Smith, and company. Hello, everyone. I'm Nina Taylor, and here is this week's Gospel News. Rudy Currents is a singer, songwriter, keyboardist, and producer whose collaborative work and solo releases have covered the genres of contemporary gospel, R&B, and rap. The Rock Hill, South Carolina native has co-written songs for the likes of Maya, R.J., and Quincy Jones. Most notably, he contributed to a pair of songs on the Craze Dove and Grammy-winning album, Gravity. He and Donald Lawrence composed Karen Clark Sheard's 7 a.m., a Grammy-nominated recording. As an artist on his own, Currents has released the R&B-oriented albums More Than You'll Ever Know in 2003, Here With You in 2006, and Digital Analog in 2016. The gospel number, Testimony, came out in 2017, was issued as the lead single for another full-length album entitled Stained Glass Windows. James Fortune albums are a bit like an urban gospel hip-hop soul review all done up in showbiz style on Broadway, complete with Fortune's spoken, sang, and shouted encouragement. Fortune, who was born on November 29, 
1978 in Richmond, Texas, was raised in church where his dad was a pastor, and he was playing drums by the age of five. He graduated from Kemper High School in Sugar Land, Texas, then attended Cal State Northridge, and consequently became the choir director at Dimensions Church in Houston. As much or more a preacher, choir leader, master of ceremonies, and worship service manager as he is a straight-up singer, Fortune's strength is understanding how to put gospel and praise songs over to a young 21st century audience. And with his featured choir, FIA, which stands for Free in Yahweh's Abundance, he freely incorporates hip-hop arrangements and urban beats into his recordings, which include You Survived in 2004, The Transformation in 2007, Encore 2010, Identity and Grace, Gift, both released in 2012. This Woman's History Month, we salute Dr. Mae Jemison. She's the first African-American woman into space. She's also a physician, a Peace Corps volunteer, a teacher, and founder and president of two technology companies. Dr. Mae Jamison was born in Decatur, Alabama on October 17, 1956. She moved to Chicago at the age of three and considers it her hometown. The youngest of three children born to a maintenance worker and an elementary school teacher, she had a fascination with all things science from an early age. Jemison's parents supported her desire to be a scientist. Jemison did well in high school and attended Stanford University on scholarship at the age of 16. There, she attained her Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts in African and African American Studies. She went on to earn her doctorate in medicine from Cornell University in 1981. After working as a general practitioner, Jemison served two and a half years as a volunteer in the Peace Corps, spending time in the African countries of Sierra Leone and Liberia. In addition to English, she speaks Russian, Japanese, Japanese and Swahili. NASA astronaut Mae Jemison flew on the space shuttle Endeavor in September of 1992, becoming the first black woman to travel into space. After the historic flight of Sally Ride, the first American woman in space, Jemison applied to NASA's astronaut program, feeling that more opportunities had opened up. The explosion of the Challenger shuttle put a hold on applicants, but in 1987, she became one of the 15 candidates selected out of more than 2,000 people. On September 12th, May Jemison became the first African-American woman in space when the Space Shuttle Endeavor carried her and six other astronauts on 126 orbits around the Earth. A mission specialist Jemison was co-investigator of two bone cell research experiments, one of 43 scientific investigations that were done on the mission STS-47. The shuttle landed at Kennedy Center in Florida on September 20th. Here's this week's Top 10 Gospel Songs. Number 10, C.C. Winant still holding on to number 10 with Never Lost. 9, Brian Poppin and Tasha Page Lockhart with Beautiful Savior. Number 8, Tasha Cobbs Leonard, In Spite of Me. 7, Kelante Gavin, Hold Me Close. 6, Clark Sisters featuring Snoop Dogg with His Love. 5, Jokia with Yahweh. 4, Byron Cage, I Can't Give Up. 3, Corinne Hawthorne, Speak to Me. 2, Charles Jenkins and Fellowship Chicago, He'll Make It All Right. And our new number one song for this week comes from Pastor Mike Jr. with I Got It. Well, that's your top ten songs, your tribute to Dr. Mae Jemison, and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor, reminding you to connect with me on all social media outlets. You can find all my outlets on my website at msninataylor.com. Now, let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. Nina Taylor, along with elect lady Sharon Richards, every Thursday night at 10 It's the pastor's corner, and we say good evening, praise God, shabba do to you. Welcome tonight to the pastor's corner. We are so excited to be here with you tonight, and we are so anticipating God to do something great, mighty, and powerful. And you know what? We give him praise because he kept us through everything that we have been through, and so therefore, 
we are grateful to the Lord that he allowed us this opportunity. I am your host for the time being, Apostle Urban A. Whitlow, Jr. I'm standing in for the moment for Bishop-designate Ernest E. Richard, Jr., who is running a tad bit late. But we're going to get this party started. And we greet you in Jesus' name. Let's see who is with us tonight from our crew. Let me start this way. Let's see if the man himself, the great mind of, uh, uh, of, of preaching and teaching, who happens to be the, uh, the, the professor at his own university, that is the volume of the book university, who is the pastor of the Morning Star and the presiding prelate, a volume of the book, Deliverance Ministries International Incorporated. I'm talking about the doctor himself, Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Are you here, sir? This is the lonely janitor, Vincent L. Smith. I'm just cleaning God's house. That's all. You're cleaning God's house. Oh, okay. Well, you're a preacher that cleans God's house. That's a good thing. That means you know how to serve. Amen. Let me see. I know that the woman of God who produces the show is here, and so I need her to give us a shout-out. I'm talking about the one, the only, the lovely Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Come on and talk to us, woman of God. This is Kimmy Kim. I'm in a place to be. I just want to let you know that God is good to me. Hey. Anyway, I was trying to rap, but I don't know if I passed. <laughs> you are a poet, girl. You are a poet, and we need to know it. <laughs> no, that was freestyle. That was freestyle right there. So, you know, I got to bring back my beat spot. You know, I like hip hop. So, you know, but hi, I'm Kimmy Kim. Lord <laughs> Jesus, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, you about to choke me up, woman. You about to choke me up. Lord, have mercy. You she up came tonight. out. She that cup. Yeah. Come up here like a superstar DJ and whatnot up there, like she's digging the salt and pepper and whatnot. Oh, I don't know. I tell you, to God be the glory. But uh, let me see. I, I believe that we have another woman of God who is here who normally joins us. Uh, she's normally known as the quiet storm, but she has become a raging tempest when she begins to open her mouth and decree and declare the word of the Lord. I'm talking about the woman of God herself, Associate Pastor Elder Anna Henderson, out of that great state of Indiana. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and blessed is the man that trusted in him. I'm so glad to be a part of the discussion tonight and looking forward to it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, I know that uh, most people don't know this, but that Pastor Henderson has a sister who is just as much a fireball in her own right. And she's so profound that she had to go from the north to the south to hang out in the Peach State. I heard that's where she be, and she is Minister Paula Henderson. Are you with us on tonight? Yes, I am. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. God bless. It's just a pleasure to be with everyone, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Amen. Amen. Well, we're so excited about each and every one of you being here tonight. Amen. Um, I, I, I want, I'm here talking, and I want to point out something uh, before uh, Bishop Designate gets here, and I want us all to just kind of take a look at it for a moment. But uh, Minister Paula Henderson, would you be so kind as to lead us in a word of prayer tonight since I called your name last? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, God, for being in the midst. You said where two or more are gathered in your name, there you would be in the midst. So we just want to thank and praise you, God, for just being a good God, just being a mighty God, a Savior, 
Lord God, we just bless your name. Uh, we ask that you would just um, be in the midst tonight, Lord God. Let there be a word that would be said that would encourage, Lord God, that would lift up, that would draw someone to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you for what you're doing, and we just ask that you continue to uh, bless and keep your people. Um, and we give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I want to, if you will, trouble you all for just a few moments uh, because um, I, I, I'm seeing something that's happening in our country that makes me want to look at some things, okay? And I want you all to tell me what you think. I, I mean, I'm not certain if this designate is finished with that deliverance as a process, but there's something that I have been noticing over the past couple of weeks, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to catch this with me. In Second Peter, the second chapter, somewhere down about the, uh, the 20th verse, it says, actually, let me start with 19 and go on down to 21. It says, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Watch this, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Here's what I'm thinking, and I want y'all to go with me for just this brief moment. This past year, if you will, this thing called a pandemic, pandemic, epidemic, whatever demic you want to call it, has been completely effective. For the past uh, 12 months, there was no focus on murders. There was no focus on mass killings. The big thing was everybody was complaining about staying inside, being at home. If you had to go to the grocery store or you had a doctor's appointment, you had to go to that, but you had to come right back inside. Uh, it then, here you come inside, right, and you're safe. Now they don't come up with this vaccination for this COVID-19 and now it is seen, it appears that people are going back out to being out freely. But now we're hearing again of the resurgence of multiple killings. We hear of a couple of weeks, about a week or so ago in the Atlanta area, a man goes into three different massage parlors and he begins to shoot up uh, some of the individuals who are there which includes six Asian women and two others, a total of eight in three different parlors. Then we hear over somewhere in Colorado in a grocery store, a man begins to open fire and, and, and 10 people are now dead. Now, we know that if this is in, this is caused by someone in the African-American community, they don't have a shot at living. But because it wasn't uh, 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 perpetrated by the African American or the brown community, these individuals are left alive and they're told to put their weapons down. My concern is have people begin returning to their own old ways because it appears that everything is supposedly coming back to normal. That's what I want to know from you all and what you think with what's going on. Do you think people are returning to their old ways? 
because they think things are going back to normal. Any one of you can talk to me on that wise, but don't speak at once. I I really don't think it is a return to normal. I think we are being faced with another or an other uh, epidemic or pandemic, damnemic, whatever demic it is. I think we're we're about to be faced with another release of frustration because in the midst of being closed in, even though some will never admit, but some people's minds went off into the wild blue yonder while being shut in. And so their mind is in a worse state than before the pandemic began. So I think we're getting ready to face with something uh, that has nothing to do with a virus or sickness or even the death thereof. This is something mental that's getting ready to take place in even more weeks, even more months to come. We're going to start to see more mental things begin to happen. Okay. All right. Any of you ladies want to make a comment? Come on now. Y'all are educated. Talk to me now. Well, for me, um, that has always been a norm. This is not anything new. I mean, if we revisit prior to the pandemic, um, you will see, like, unfortunately, the church shooting, the school shooting, and they were apprehended. I witnessed, honestly, in St. Louis, a white male chasing, he was being chased by the police officer, okay, in a um, driver's license that was suspended with his girlfriend. They wanted to make sure that um, everybody was out of the way, and to make the long story short, they apprehended him, and they was like, are you okay? Michael Brown, who had, he was just a teenager, <laughs> and minded his own business, he was killed and gunned down with no weapon. Of course, we would still, unfortunately, have this norm that, um, you know, um, they preserve the white lies, but the moment they feel threatened or they see that we may have a cell phone or, um, a child gun. I mean, I'm still tripping off of wife in Ohio. A child who is, you can tell the difference between a, a play gun and a real gun. He gets killed from a police officer, but that police officer was acquitted. It's mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's frustrating. It makes me mad. It makes me want to holler. But I know <laughs> my God will pay. Because he says, vengeance belongs to him. So absolutely it gets me angry, upset. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, we will have hatred. We will have those who hate you just because. And so what we must continue on doing, and it's hard to do, trust me, I am still learning this, to pray for your enemies. I have to do this on my God's strength. I cannot do this on my strength because I will not pray for my enemies. The Holy Spirit teaches me to <laughs> pray for my enemies because I'm going to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's very frustrating. If I didn't have the Lord in me, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hear you. Come on. Let me hear from you, Henderson. Say something to me. Just to add on to what uh, has already been said, you know, when you asked that question, the first thing I thought about was Matthew 24, when it talks about the signs of the end times. And in Matthew 24 and 12, it says, because of iniquity, and because iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. And I really believe that a lot of what we're seeing is signs of the time, because we are close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the rapture. 
And I, I believe that the things that we are seeing are the end time signs to let the church know that it's time to wake up and it's time to be prepared. I also think that um, that what we're seeing is that a spirit of lawlessness has been released in the land and that this spirit is a spirit of murder, it's a spirit of deception, it's a spirit that is antagonizing and wanting to overthrow the, the word of God, overthrow truth in the land, overthrow, overthrow righteousness in the land. And so this is senseless killings that are happening. It's not even, they're not even able to piece why some of these things are just happening. People are just doing strange things. And I truly believe that the spirit of, of, of uh, lawlessness has been released in the land. And, and these are some of the signs and that the love of, of, of many is waxing cold, that there's, there's no love uh, the way that should be in the land. And I just think that these are signs of things that are letting us know as believers that the Lord is going to come because these things must come to pass and we're seeing them and we're living through them. And we have never lived in a time like this. This is, this is a time that we have never seen before. And I truly believe that we are living in those times of the end of the end of time, which we are soon to see the coming of the Messiah. And I believe that things we are seeing are, are, are the, the wickedness uh, that is in the land, and, and it is and it is um, has been released. And, and this is so when we see these things, um, I think that we should start lining it up with the Word of God and see that these things are is in is in um, as what some of the things the Lord said would happen. And so that's how I look at when I see these things. And yes, it is just painful to see it, and you know it just makes me pray even the more because it could be closer to home to us in our land, you know, in our town, in our city, you know, we're seeing a lot of things already. But, I mean, you know, the earthquakes, the, 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 the devastations that we are seeing across the country, we're living in a time that we've never seen before. So this is plain time. This is plain time. When I see these things and hear these things, it just makes me want to draw closer to the Lord and know that look up for your redemption draws now because the Lord Jesus Christ is on his way back. So we got to stay prayerful as a people, and we have to be about the Lord's business so that souls can be saved and let people know that the Lord is coming back. It's time to get right. Get right, church. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Minister Paula Henderson, anything you want to add? Well, um, you mentioned the fact that, or you asked, the question, is it that people are getting back to normal? And I, my comment is there is nothing normal, in my opinion, about going around and shooting up people for, just, just for no particular reason. There's nothing normal about that. And I think that we need to be careful when we're starting to normalize what is abnormal and what is crazy, uh, basically. It's, it's time for us to stop the madness, so to speak, because, you know, whether we approach it from a sociological or psychological point of view or whether we look at gun control, um, laws that need to be put in place that should have been established, you know, a long time ago, there's so much uh, political uh, back and forth about how we should handle gun control. Um, these are all things that... Um, tools that that and, and issues that need to be addressed um but you know the issue is i mean it's not a normal activity for someone to go around doing what happened in atlanta or what happened in colorado and um from a spiritual perspective you might want to consider it you know is it you know that some of these shootings these mass shootings i mean is there some level of demon possession honestly um so i mean that's just my thought on it but you know that's it that's all i can think of um, is that there must level of spiritual deterioration or even demon possession that may cause someone to do something so uh horrible amen and and you know and i definitely understand where you're coming from you know, but it, it, it for the I, I, as long as this pandemic uh, was operating, I feel that there was no attention really to some of the things that were going on. And now, because there is this vaccine, it to me, and and I do understand where everybody's coming from, but it seems like this this crazy life is picking back up 
where people are doing the same thing again. And yes, I do agree with it being signs of the time and things that we should be mindful of. There's nothing normal about it, but because it has happened uh, for so long, there seems to be some kind of normalcy in it uh, for some people uh, to think that it's okay to, to, to take lives, to slaughter folk, and to carry on. I think that it also shows how much needful it is still for the people of God to be prayerful. Uh, because for some reason, uh, people stop praying when they're not in the house of God. They, st- they stop seeking the face of God. They stop seeking the help of God. They stop seeking the aid of God. And so, therefore, you have people who are overcome by many of the things that they have seen because what they have refused to do is be overcome by the Spirit of the Lord. And we're in a day and time where we need the Spirit of the Lord more than ever. Uh, would, you, would anybody agree that we need the Spirit of the Lord more than ever? Uh, the, I remember we used to sing a song back in the day, if I ever needed the Lord before, I surely need him now. Uh, that is more true today than when that song was first sang some quite a few decades ago. Amen. I think that we really need the Lord more than ever. But I think that also that many believers are even afraid to say what God is saying or to operate in their spiritual authority, uh, which is interesting to me because it seems like so many believers, they, they know the word of God uh, yeah, in, in, in the sense of knowing the scripture, but in a sense of applying it when it's necessary, they don't want to do that part. They don't want to take on spiritual warfare. They don't want to take on some of these uh, enemies and these demons and things that are showing up, uh, but yet they're so saved. So, so, you know, my question is, do the people of God even know the way of righteousness anymore? Or have they just totally abandoned God and what God is desiring to do through his people? Anybody? Bro, Whitlow, Bro, Whitlow let, let, me, let me go back. Let me go back to what I said, tie it in with what Paula said. You must understand. And that's why I started the response to your initial question the way I did. It has to be something mental. And when I say mental, there's something wrong in the psyche. Well, it's one thing for a person to grab a gun, somebody busting your house, and you go get your weapon of protection. That's one thing. But to jump in your car and ride around town shooting up people, that has something to do with the psyche. And believe me, there's some kind of deep money along with that kind of psyche that will cause you to think that you can ride from salon to salon and just shoot people. It's something in the psyche that makes you think you can walk in a Walmart. That happened not too long ago. But you can walk in a Walmart and just start shooting at people. And there's something wrong when you do that. this act that just happened in Colorado. That is not normal. It will never be normal. Amen. And then God shared with us himself in the book of Genesis of all books. He said, what man think he has the right to paraphrase it? He said, but what man thinks he has the right to shed innocent blood? Neither one and neither instance that we talk about tonight can they declare somebody made them mad. There was somebody in there that was calling them, saying threatening things or anything of this type. This is some nut that jump in their car and in in the best way of saying it through a demonic conversation 
conversation. Go into a place taking a weapon that will do bodily harm and even cause death and start releasing fire where there's children, where there's elderly, where there are young people. Don't tell me that ain't the devil. Don't tell me that's not a mental psychic problem. Amen. That is not, that has nothing to do with a bad day. It has nothing to do with the pandemic. It ain't got nothing to do with the vaccine shot. That's the devil at work at his best. I have to agree with that, Apostle. I definitely have to agree with that. And I do want to throw this up there. Uh, for those old schoolers, and I do apologize, I'm not Apostle Whitlow for getting the show started. I'm going to have to leave you guys in about three minutes, and then I'll be right back to you, and then I think I'll be settled for the night. <laughs> Nonetheless, getting back to this particular young man, think about this for a hot minute. There were two types of children that have been raised in the last 60 years. There was the timeout set, and then there was the whoop your behind set. Those that were in the whoop-your-behind set did not shoot people, did not mass murder people with semi-automatic weapons. They had manners. They were polite. They had etiquette. They had scruples. A lot of them had morals. Now, they all weren't perfect, but they all had a level of respect for their elders whose shoulders they stood on. The timeout crew is feeling like they're entitled, that they're much better, that they're smarter, that they're faster, that they're stronger, that they're more dominant. They don't have to put up with the madness. And for those that don't measure up to that stature, their measure of revenge is what we just saw, not just this, uh, uh, this past week with this individual. First of all, he was sane enough to go to the gun store that day purchase the weapon, and then go shoot and kill somebody. Don't tell me he was having a bad day. He wasn't having a bad day. He was listening to them voices that were in his head, and them voices in his head said, we're going to kill somebody today. You know, a lot of them think it's a video game where you shoot somebody, and when it says game over, uh, we could start over again. All right, that's my comment. I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about that. The statement, oh, he realizes what he was doing. He was just having a bad day, as if that makes it any better. There's a lot of people who have a bad day, but in their having a bad day, they don't go get a gun and shoot somebody just because they're having a bad day. They don't go rob a bank just because they're having a bad day. They don't purposely take their vehicle and use it as a weapon. You know, I was thinking that over here in Augusta uh, a couple of nights ago, someone was sitting in Waffle House eating, and they ended up that they ended up being their last meal. Why? Somebody walked in there and shot them. Of course, it's not going to make the local news because it was only one individual. But what I'm saying is that there is something that is in the atmosphere causing people to act foo foo. I like the fact that you you said Apostle Smith that they have a mental disorder, if you will. Uh, you know, because we know demons cause mental maladies. At the same time, you know, I think about what Bishop Desmond just said. There were those who were raised, and they were raised with a spanking, and there were those who were raised, you know, to do what they want to do. Either way, we are in troubling times. I am so in agreement that we are in the last days, but, but here's my thing. If what Jesus was telling us then that these times would come, and then Apostle Paul tells us that in the last days, terror, perilous times shall come, and that's what it was then, then what is this that we're facing now? Anybody? If that's what Jesus said when he was here about the times that were going to come, and Apostle Paul said that in the last days, perilous times would come, and he was in the last days then. What are we facing right now? What is this right now that we're dealing with? I call this the end times. 
so the last days and the end time are two different things? Let me just wrap this up, and then I'll be ready to go. No. <laughs> Leave us hanging. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, ladies. Y'all are quiet. Y'all are quiet. I believe that this is the end of the end of time. I believe that after the Lord Jesus Christ uh, ascended, left the first time, I believe that was the end of time for, for a certain dispensation of time. But I truly believe that we are at the end of the end of time, that we're in that last day. We're in that last regime of, of, of this dispensation. And so I think that back then uh, they were having a whole lot of issues back then as well. Um, and Paul was telling them, you know, to be aware because they had the Judaizers that were coming in. They had a lot of issues that was going on, and he was forewarning them. And then you had a group that was um, selling all their things and was just waiting for the coming of the Lord. So you had a lot of different things happening because people were actually preparing for him to come even back in that time. And since our generation of time, you know, we have heard that the Lord is coming, the Lord is coming. But I truly believe that we are in the end of the end of time and that we are closer now in this generation than we ever have been to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says that in the last days. Go ahead. Keep going. Don't stop. No, let me stop you. And he compared it to the days of Noah, you know, uh, and, and what was going on. And so that's the time we see everybody stirred away with all, you know, drinking and eating and being married and the violence. And you look back to what was going on back then. Instead of iniquity, the, the wickedness that was happening even back in Noah's time. And we're seeing of, of, of that wickedness has been increased, has been accelerated. And so um, these also, all the things that he mentioned and was talking about in, in the book of uh, Matthew, that 24th chapter, we are seeing these things. There is really not much that has not been fulfilled because Jesus Christ, uh, he fulfilled and is fulfilling um, the time even right now. What we're seeing, I truly believe, is the unveiling of, of of the end time. We're in the end time right now. We're in the end of the end time. And we're seeing these things on very before our eyes. And I think sometimes because, you know, the media, because of everything that's going on, people are just taking it and, and just looking at it from a socialist point of view, that this is what's happening in the government. government uh, you know, they're trying to understand it from a humanistic point of view. But as believers, and even the ungodly know that there's something supernatural, something spiritual happening. So it is time for the church to wake up and recognize that it's not time as usual. This is this is not the same time. We have entered into another zone spiritually. So, and what we are seeing is we are seeing the the, the iniquity abounding in the earth. Now we're seeing that spirit of of, of iniquity. We're seeing that spirit. Of, of lawlessness in the land where wrong is right now and right is wrong. And so uh, there's no censorship on, on what is right, what's wrong. So now we are dealing with so many issues law, with the law, with the government, with the things that's being passed, with the things that's being accepted. Um, it, it's just so much going on. But all of this can be tied back to Scripture. All of this can be tied back as you go back and research the Scriptures of what was happening in the days of Noah and compare what he has given us in the word of God to what is happening now, we will see that we are living in the in the prophecy, in the word that Jesus Christ himself gave us to look for. We are living in those times, right? Well, I mean, it's no doubt about that. I mean, Matthew 24, Jesus gave the indication from the elements, from the, I should say, the elemental standpoint. He talked about diverse earthquakes and pestilences. People, uh, We said this a few weeks ago, so let's just say it again tonight. We keep misconstruing and thinking coronavirus is new. Coronavirus is not new. Coronavirus has been around for God knows how long. It's just brought it. It's just re- come back around one more time, and this time when it comes around, it came back more deadlier than it was the last time it was here. Now Jesus mm-hmm. talked about this in Matthew about diverse earthquakes. He talked about men's hearts failing them because of fear, because they, they and the fear is not necessarily being afraid. The fear is exceptionally high levels of stress to the point where their heart just gives out. 
And we're seeing these things. I mean, we're talking about you. everybody on this phone knows somebody who was, quote, unquote, physically fit. Next thing you know, we heard they just dropped dead. They just dropped dead. What happened? So, I mean, these are the end times. And then Paul, as somebody already mentioned, in Gal, uh, uh, Galatians chapter 3, he talked about perilous times, talking about men being love, high-minded, heady, boastful, lovers of themselves more than of God. And he went through the whole ball of wax as to what we were dealing with in terms of your common man. Now, looking at where we are today, and Apostle Whitlow, you did ask the question, are end times uh, any different? No, there's not much difference. It's just that violence has increased. That's the only difference. After that, nothing, my brother. I mean, after that, you know, I mean, what, what, what can we say? The more we see, the more, what's the word I'm trying to find? The more we see, the more we need to be convinced that, you know, Jesus really is soon to come. Now, there is a parable that we don't talk much about and. God, I got to get on this message. I've been talking about it for days and even weeks, and it's just time to get ready to preach it. The message is entitled, Will You Be Ready When Jesus Comes? And it has to do with the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. And it really, if you and uh, uh, many of you on this line have probably studied the Jewish wedding feast and the process of it, what it took to get that wedding feast, uh, that wedding put together, and the preparation. And just to, I'm going to skim through it very quickly just to show you what I'm talking about. This is how we know Jesus is very soon to come. In that particular parable, the, the fathers got together traditionally and, you know, discussed the wedding and made plans. They allowed the son to have a minor conversation with the bride-to-be, and he's sweeping her off his feet. He's telling her, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be with you to the end. I'm going to supply all your needs, and I'm going to do this. And he's pulling a song of Solomon on this chick somewhere down the line. Nonetheless, he gets that time to talk, and when he's finished talking, saying what he had to say, and telling this young lady about the promise he's about to keep, now it was time for him to go and prepare a place for that bride and his father would not allow him to and I, I left all the cups out because there are three cups now anybody that studied their bible will understand three cups and we know the fourth cup which has not been lifted as of yet all this correlates to that jewish wedding feast moving along he has to go away now build a place get a place prepared for his bride and when he gets ready to come back, he and his wedding party will meet the bride and her wedding party as everybody gets ready to take off and go into the feast, which usually lasts about a week. Now, I'm going to tie all this up and shut up because I know you got a lot more stuff to say, and I don't want to take up the last 45 or hour or whatever we got left. But he comes back, and the five wise are ready, and the five foolish have to go get ready. And the bottom line is they go into the, into the wedding feast, and they close the door. And you can't get in Spiritually speaking there are a lot of us That think we're prepared but we have no Oil in our lamps we're not prepared We're not looking for the Return of the bridegroom We're not looking for his appearance But when he does appear And I think Apostle Smith And uh, Apostle Whitlow and I had a, a minor conversation concerning This earlier today We who are dead in Christ Will rise first And they who are alive and yet remain shall experience immortality in a change from their natural to the glorified. Those who are not ready to go into the feast will be left behind. So we have to pay attention to the things that are out there. Now you're saying, well, why are you tell me all that? What's that got to do with what we're talking about? I'm just simply saying if you would just obtain and sustain or maintain and sustain the spirit of the sons of Issachar, you'll know the times, you'll know the seasons, and you'll make preparation and get ready. He is soon to come. You you know Apostle Whitlow and Brother Rich, everybody on the line, the thing that is so serious, about this conversation is that after 
Jesus is Christ to us. All that shall let us know that we are in the end time. He says these words and it touches my heart every time. He says, and I'm going to paraphrase it, he says, don't bug out. Don't go crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All these signs I just told you about is not the end. It's just the beginning of sorrow. That's it. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord. I, I'm just it, trying to calm down. Uh, uh, uh. That's all right. It's to be what we are experiencing. We, as the people of God, cannot play it down in no shape, form, or fashion. The time is so dangerous right now. We are already in the time of sorrow. Have you noticed? I don't care how much good goes on. As soon as you watch the news, there's enough dangerous stuff. <laughs> there's mm. enough dangerous stuff going on that it just wipes all the good almost right out of your head. Oh, my. Oh, my. Mm. These are the times of sorrow. There's a sadness in pain. And guess what? But here's where I get joy. It said it would be worse, except for the righteous are still here. Mm -hmm. Think about that now. That that is what we're seeing. It said it could be worse. But we are still here. That's why I say on the prayer line every day is because of us. Somebody has just been turned around. Mm-hmm. If I would we agree. Were not, if we were not on the prayer line, if others were not on their prayer line, let me just put it like this. If the, if the saints were not here and there was no prayer, in the earth. Oh my God. We think mm. we're seeing something now. Wait till we're removed. Yes. It hasn't even got Amen. bad yet. It's not bad yet. This is just the beginning of sorrow. This is just the beginning mm-hmm. of the sadness that's really getting ready to hit the earth. <coughs> You're right. You're right. And I mean, we, we saw what I call the trickle down effect. Um, with, with When we look at Corona, it was the trickle down effect. I know over a half a million died, but <coughs> excuse me, it was the plan of the Lord for that thing to take place. <coughs> I don't know why I choked. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Awesome. But anyway, uh, the bottom line is this. Um, what we're seeing in this day and age is the birth pain of what's coming. Let me put it back in your hands, Apostle Whitlow, so I can go cough my brains loose and then come back here and sound like I got some sense. Oh, my goodness. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking that a lot of these individuals have become are servants of corruption. They've been overcome by evil. So they're in bondage to evil. They are, let me say it again, they've been overcome by corruption. They've been, uh, they become the servants of corruption and they are overcome by evil. So they're in bondage to evil. We're living in times where people are in bondage to evil. So because they're in bondage to evil, this is why we see that many are carrying on the way they are carrying on. The Bible says that 
they are of their father, the devil, because he sins from the beginning. He was a murderer in the beginning, and when he when he when he speaks a lie, he speaks of himself, or he is a, a, a liar and the father of it. So we are we are living in a time where people are in bondage to evil. Anybody want to uh, agree with that? Comment on that. I, I okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was go ahead. I was going to comment when you when uh, this is just it said birth. You know, we're experiencing the birthing pain. You know, we we and you said that the sorrow is just beginning of sorrow. We what we experience are the birthing pains of of of, of the earth is groaning. The Bible says even the earth and the groans and moans for the coming of the Lord. You know, everything is happening. These are birthing pains. We are living in dangerous times. It's affecting so many as aspects of the human um the, the human race. And and these are the birthing pains. And um and it says that the for the and Thessalonians it says that the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it will let it until he that is taken out of the way. And it says, and then shall the wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with, with the spirit of his mouth, uh, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. And when I think about that wind, you know, will consume him with the, with the spirit of his mouth. You know, there's a time coming. We're, we're, in the end, we're ending in this ending age, and uh, we are experiencing the first change. And he says, um, I wanted to go back to the question because I kind of forgot the question, but I was kind of holding that. I was thinking about that scripture as you were talking about we expect just like a woman has those pains, you know, and she's it's not comfortable. We're living in a very uncomfortable age, and my heart goes out for. I mean, it's, it just goes on in so many different areas, and 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 especially for those who do not know the Lord, they don't even know. They don't, even, they don't know how to protect them, so they don't know how to call on the Lord. And that's why it's so important as we as believers that, you know, the intercessors take their place in because a lot of the young people, a lot of people in general, they don't, they've never gone through anything like this. This is a time none of, none of us, I believe, in this generation have experienced what we are seeing. So this is a new, you know, it's, it's new to us. But we also know the word. Those who are believers who know the word, we also know that these are the birthing pains that the Lord Jesus Christ talked about and told us to look for these things because these are going to be signs uh, of the end times. And so, but those who don't know the Lord, the Bible says that the world, the prince of this world, has blinded their eyes so that they don't even see the truth. And now, truth is is being is being concealed. And so, the spirit of lawlessness is trying to conceal or trying to hide the truth. And that's why it's so important that as believers, we we have to persevere with truth. We cannot compromise. We cannot settle. We cannot be silent. We cannot allow the truth to be cast down because that's the spirit of lawlessness is, is trying to um, reverse the truth. It's trying to overthrow the truth. And now that's why the laws are being made that, that are perverse, that are perverse. Uh, in the eyesight of God and the things that we're seeing and the laws of being passed is against God. It's the spirit of lawlessness that is that has been loosed in the land and the spirit of iniquity. And so um, we that have the word, that have the truth, we have to speak it with boldness. We have to speak it with authority. We have to declare the truth so that people that are lost, those who don't have the understanding of the light, does not have any knowledge of this word. There's a lot of people that don't even know anything about what we're talking about tonight. And so that's why it's so important that we intercede, that we pray without ceasing, that those that are unsaved, whether it be our unsaved loved ones, whether it be those that we don't even know, that we intervene, that they will come into the light and the knowledge of the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Here's a pity. Here's a pity. Let us not forget also that this is one of the prophetic statements in the word of God, that in the latter days, they would go out and kill people and think they're doing the will of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Are we still here? We're still. I'm still here. Okay. I was, uh, what happened to for, him? Uh, Apostle Smith. I was waiting for him to finish his uh, statement. His phone right. dropped. But well, he disappeared. Okay. Well, go ahead, uh, Bishop Desmond. When he comes back in, we'll be <clears> back with him. All right. Well, primarily, uh, I, and I'm not sure if he was exactly going uh in this this route but i'm going to do what i can just to uh pull we want to first of all say thank you to all of you who have tuned in this is the pastor's corner i'm elder ernest e richard jr along with my co-host uh apostle Irvin whitlow chief apostle vincent l swift smith excuse me i said swift smith uh, and Pastor Anna Henderson, Dr. Kim Robinson, and uh, joining us also is Minister Paula Henderson. And we just bless God for every one of you who are listening by way of radio or however you're hearing us tonight. We're talking about the end times. I don't know exactly what title Apostle Whitlow gave it, but when I came in, it sounded like we were talking about this last incident with the gunslinging. Somebody on TikTok made this comment, and I'm going to say this to each of you, and I need you all to respond to this because I already responded, and I'll tell you what I said after we've had opportunity and chance to uh, jump in it, jump on it, and talk about it. Uh, primarily what was said by the individual. It's funny how every time there's a Democratic president, there is a mass shooting. Well, what the person failed to realize is every time there's a Democratic president, there's a mass shooting. It's because some idiot who might possibly be Republican, I can't say that they were, are disgruntled because they're not getting their way. Anybody ever met that spoiled brat that when he doesn't get his way, he throws a temper tantrum? This is what I tend to think these individuals are doing. Anybody want to respond to that? I think there's an element of truth to that uh, because, you know, they can't, like you said, they can't have their way, um, mm-hmm. you know, and so they want to on somebody. So what they do is they wreak havoc, throw their hand, and then say, oh, it's because of the Democratic Party. No, it's not because of the Democratic Party. It's because someone had a hidden agenda uh, because they couldn't get what they wanted to get. So they figured what they try to do is make the Democratic Party look bad. That's just my take yeah. on it. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna call it the Demonic Party, not the Democratic Party. <laughs> that's just my, and that's just my take on it. You know, because anytime yeah. you just take it upon yourself to decide you're going to ruin somebody's life, ruin somebody's family, because you can't have your way. I have a problem with that. And see, uh, the police officer that made that report and said, quote, unquote, that he was having a bad day, that that man should be fired. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. That man should be terminated, taken off of his post, Never allowed to be a police officer anywhere in the continental United States ever again. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why I say that, because making a comment like that, that is asinine. So tell that to the families that lost loved ones, okay? Go tell those families oh, that you were having a bad day. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Tell those other mm-hmm. families that he was having a bad day. Yeah, because that comment, almost, that, that comment was almost like as if he was giving permission, like he was giving it an excuse or a reason, you know, like he yes. was almost condoning it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so that was a comment that should not have been made. I agree 100%. True. But what it does, if you will, it goes back to the racism that exists. And please understand that it is not blacks against whites. Please understand that no. it is a, no. it is back against racism. There's a big difference. There is a big difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, reality. We are tired of not being treated properly, fairly, or correctly. Not getting the things we deserve after all that has been done that we did 
to build this country to be what it is. Yeah, we just Amen. want some respect because we have earned it after all the efforts we have put forth to make sure that the country can run. Because without us, there wouldn't be no life. Without us, there wouldn't even be no peanut butter. Without us, there would be... Yeah, man, let me hush my mouth before I get myself in trouble. Mm-mm. 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 Come on, keep talking. Keep talking. Did you say without us, wouldn't be any peanut butter? <laughs> That's what he said. But, he, but he's Ain't right. It. He's right. True. And I love peanut Thank butter. Thank God for <laughs> Because mm-hmm. at the time, we have pancakes. Come mm-hmm. on here. Mm-hmm. Okay. They like. Anyway, praise God. Touch my mouth. Somebody talk to I us mean, here. Talk to us. We have, I mean, you could talk about the hundreds and even thousands of inventions. Truth of the matter mm-hmm. is, uh, and I have to re echo the words of one Rodney King, the late Rodney King. Can we all get along? Yeah. I am so tired of us fighting over stupid stuff. Mm, all right. Come on, y'all. Don't get quiet. Dr. Kimmy Robinson, we haven't heard from you. Well, I am just enjoying the conversation among my brothers Don't and sisters. Don't just enjoy the conversation. Get into the conversation. <laughs> See, we're going to well, we, we, we annihilating excuses. <laughs> no, I'm just being real. I did, uh, you know, fact check that information regarding Trump not having any um, any uh, shootings, and that is true. However, <laughs> that doesn't mean that uh, people didn't want to. You have to remember also, um, a lot of the people who are really um, doing these crimes are – you know, I wouldn't say or put them in a Republican or a Democrat. I would put them in a, you know, in a state of they're not stable. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, when you see someone who can just, like, go into a nail salon and just shoot up people because he had a bad day, mm-hmm. um, that is very sad to see. However... Like my sister said, uh, we are living in a perilous time, and unfortunately, it seems to get a lot much worse before they get better, before Jesus comes back. It says that in the Bible. However, his his children, such God's children, is called to what? Continue on watching and praying, to stay ready, right? To to um. To pray, um, I mean, okay, of course you want to pray with activity, but prayer is so much needed because I'm going to be real. Even though you may hate on me and things like that, the worst thing I would want to see that my enemy get is the wrath of God. So I do pray for my enemies. And it's not mm-hmm. easy. No, I don't do it because um, I'm the jolly. I have to be led by the Spirit. Because the wrath of Amen. God, oof. <laughs> I mean, un, I mean, nasty of the teeth, um, burning of the soul constantly, and no break. I really don't want that for anyone. So I do pray, and I pray that you know, um, because it says in the word, man may take your physical being, he may try to murder you, but they have no control over your spiritual man. That is. Powerful. Only God controls the spirit man. So when we focus, when we talk about these things, we have to also reiterate that we are in the world, not of the world. We are traveling or mm-hmm. you know, we are passengers traveling along this way until God calls mm-hmm. us home. So we must mm-hmm. continue on being ready. And yes, it's sad to see these things, but it's been prophesied in the word. It's been told, but more, more things will happen. Um, how would you feel if you're in Africa and if you tell someone that you're a Christian, they kill you? I mean, that's how they're living over there. Um, so, um, yeah, it's very sad, but we must continue on still not be then, then distracted of the, uh, the crimes that are happening and focus on the word 
Focus on your purpose. Focus on what God has given you to do. I mean, to go and spread the good news gospel, to you know, to show that we are different. Because unfortunately, you see a lot of the church becoming the um, the way of the world. Their standards are different. You know, you're seeing so many different standards of the church really milking down to the world. And mm-hmm. it's like mixing oil and water. They don't mix together. It says they that flesh right. and spirit cannot um, dwell among each other. You have to choose who you're going to be with. Who you with? Who you with? Are you with the Satan man? Are you with God man? And I know that God will know you based on your spirit. You could, People can like be this holy, godly thing in the, um, in the public eye, but God knows you behind closed doors. So who are mm-hmm. you no one is watching is who you really are. Mm-mm. That's a, that, who are you when no one is watching? That's a very, you know, that, that's a very good question. Who are you when no one is watching? Are you really mm-hmm. serving the Lord with nobody? Or are you just someone, if you will excuse the expression, just faking the funk? Who are you uh-huh. when nobody is watching? Amen. So, years ago, the Lord, the, the Lord graced me to share a message entitled Unsupervised Salvation. When nobody's mm-hmm. watching you, are you really saying? When nobody's watching you, are you really who God has called you to be? Or are you just faking the funk? That's my mm-hmm. question. I mean, there's, we can say so much we can talk about, right? But we just need to really consider what's going on, come to common grip that we are in, like you said, the last days, the end of time, and we need to not only be mindful of what is taking place, but the Bible tells us that we have to arm ourselves likewise. What does that mean? That means not only must we put on the armor of God, but we must put on the armor of light and the armor of righteousness. Can I get some help right right there, somebody? Yes, you can. Amen. Putting on the Amen. armor of light. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I was just going to say, um, you know, because we're discussing all these different things, um, as Christians or as believers, when you have Jesus on the inside, sometimes you have to have a different perspective. Um, uh-huh. Well, what I mean by that is that um, Mark – Mark says, these signs shall follow after them that believe. Mm-hmm. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with mm-hmm. their tongues. They shall lay, take up serpents. They shall drink any, any deadly thing, and it shall not harm them. So as a believer, we have power and we have dominion uh, in the earthly realm. And so we shouldn't walk in fear and dismay and, and, and really almost even not in shock in, in, the, things, in the things that the devil does. So whether you're talking uh-huh. about uh, COVID or corruption or whether someone's delusional or demon-possessed, we are uh, the salt of the earth. So we should be examples. We should be following after those same characteristics and those signs uh, that Mark talks about, that we should be taking up the serpents. We should be speaking with new tongues. We should be laying hands on the sick. They should be recovering from COVID. Uh, we, we have to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the earth. And when we have to uh, have the perspective that, you know, no matter what happens, no matter what the enemy is trying to do to show his head, then we still, are, uh, you know, we have more power. We have dominion over the enemy. And we have to know that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper so we can cover our children and our, and our, and our families as they go and come. And we have to know that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. So right. no matter what's happened, then we have to keep a level perspective and see it from God's point of view the way we are because we are the righteous of God. Amen. 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 I'm not going to tell you. Anyone else? After Henderson, we haven't heard from you in a minute. I think that's so important is to know who you are and whose you are. And that's so important. When you know who you are, you know whose you are. And we are not of those who act as if we don't have a God 
that reigns in in the heavenlies. And so we have help from the Lord, and we have greater the greater one living on the inside as ha- what has already been said. So it's so important to know who you are, especially in this hour, because when you don't know who you are, then you will compromise. When you don't know who you are, you will give in. When you don't know who you are, you will begin to do those things that are happening in the world. You'll start being conformed to the world. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. And so it's so important that we know who we are. But I want to go back to what Bishop Jesmond had started out when he was talking about the the uh, daily, uh, the daily uh, wedding, you know, and, and that's so important as it relates to the end time too, because Jesus gave that example of the wedding when he was talking about some of the things that was going on and then and, and, and comparing that. And we have to know that we are the bride of Christ. We're that's the bride right. of Christ. And, and so he's, when he's coming back, he's coming back for his bride that has made themselves ready without spot, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. And as that bride waited for her mate to come. She was in preparation. She was waiting. She was being faithful. She was making sure she stayed safe and stayed clean. And she was making sure that when he came, everything would be in place because he was going to be uh uh have intimacy with that with with her with with her groom. And so God is waiting to have intimacy with his church and he's ready to, to touch us up so that we can be with him in the marriage temper. So as we are knowing this and as part of knowing who we are, it helps us to be ready that we are in waiting right now. We should be making sure that our garments are staying clean. We don't want to get intermingled in with the world. We don't want to have our garments dirty. We don't want to be found unfaithful because that bride waited faithfully for her groom to come and get her. And that's what we, the mm-hmm. church, is the bride. We should be waiting faithfully. So when we see something that gets on our life, you know, get rid of it quickly, repent of it, wash, get washed in the blood, stay before the Lord, stay faithful, stay consistent, stay in faith, stay in a position of waiting because we're in preparation to be connected with Jesus Christ. He's coming back for the bride. He's coming back for us. And so we are now in the stage of preparation while all these other things are happening in the world. As this has said, it's so important that we have the right perspective and we don't get caught up. And this is happening, that's happening. That's why sometimes you've got to shut the news down and just turn it down, turn to get enough information that you need, but then shut it down because we have to make sure that we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're just passing through here. We we are the bride that's waiting right. for our room, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got to make sure we keep the right perspective while we're waiting. And we got to make sure we're preparing ourselves because he's coming. And we want to make sure that we're ready. So when he comes, that we'll be cut up. We'll meet him in the air. Amen. So I wanted to I wanted to say this one more thing before we leave tonight, and that the Bible makes this clear that uh, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. So I'm saying to somebody tonight, you're seeing all these things happening. You wonder what's going on. At the end of the day, God's plan, if you will, is being played out. God's Amen. plan is being played out. You will trust mm-hmm. what he has planned. You will find yourself coming out victorious because God never designed for you to lose in life. Mm-mm. He didn't design Mm-mm. for you to fail in life. But you will fail if you do not know what the plan of God is. Mm-hmm. And you will not make sense if you do not know what the plan of God is. I said this earlier today, and I'm going to say it tonight, and then I'm going to turn it into the hands of Bishop Designate Richard. God's will will work. Why? Because you cannot win without God's will. In Jesus' name. I pray that something something that has been said, has ministered to you, has strengthened you, has even sparked your interest to have a closer walk with the Lord. And I would like to invite you tonight to a relationship with him. If you don't know him, it is not hard to know him. I want to give you the ABCs of salvation. A, you must acknowledge that you are a sinner, meaning that you are living wrong because you do not know what God wants you to do as far as this life. 
Then you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you must confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And the Bible says that when you call on him, you shall be saved. If you're not saved tonight, I'd like to give you an invitation to come serve the Lord. He will do you good. And how would you like to do that? Just pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I need your salvation. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Now live in me. Have your way in me. Take out the old stuff so that you might come in and have full control. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my body. It's all yours. Now use me and fill me with your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. And I want you to know that life doesn't get easier because you gave your life to Christ, but it will begin to make a lot more sense when you understand that you now have Christ on your side. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to find a ministry that is preaching and teaching the word of God without compromise. I need you to find a place where you can go down in the water in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then what I want you to do is I want you to connect with us here on Facebook, the pastor's corner, and let us know that you gave your life to the Lord. And if you even need help finding a ministry that will help you to live for the Lord and operate in what God is calling you to, reach out to us. We got connections everywhere. I'm talking about from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Even if you're down in the water somewhere, there was a fish down there that knew the Lord who did his work. We can find you what you need if you just connect with us in Jesus' name. Thank you for this time. We're in the hands of Bishop Desmond Ernest. Richard Jr. I don't know why he's turned it over to me. You were doing so well. All we had to do was say, Kimmy Kim, get that track ready because we're getting ready to take off. We look for you guys now. I want to make one quick announcement before we go. And uh, those of you who are uh, Minister Henderson, I really do need to have a conversation with you. Uh, Pastor Henderson, if you please text her my number. She can actually call me before she goes to sleep tonight because I will be working through the night just so I could be home tomorrow and be home for the weekend. But coming up next week on our prayer line, I'll give you the number now and I'll give it again, 701-801-9814. There are multiple churches that will not have opportunity to do their Passion Week services. Well, we are appointing individuals to share a word with us all week. Instead of us doing our regular prayer service, we're going to do our Passion Week services by way of telephone. And what we're looking for, for those of you that want to join us, the number is 701-801-9814. That number again, 701-801. 9814. We invite you to come and to share and to be uh, in fellowship with us. We don't know who the Lord is going to call upon to bring a word. But now I will say this just so that we'll understand how this Passion Week service on uh, by way of, te- of telephone works. Always, whoever you are ministering on the given day that you choose, Make mention of what took place, biblically speaking, and help the people understand the process. Uh, in the, uh, and, you know, from beginning, and I would say this, starting with the Della Rosa or Jesus' journey uh, to the cross, we can follow him from the time he rides into Jerusalem for the last time as a man, leaves Jerusalem, as a beaten man, but comes back as a glorified man. Okay, I ain't preaching. I'm just letting you know. 
Anyway, the bottom line is we invite you every Monday through Friday, 12 o'clock, we will be having our uh, special sessions. And we encourage you to come in and just see how the Lord's going to minister to you. I believe God's going to bless it. I know it sounds last minute, people, but let me help you out with something. When God puts something together, you and I think it's last minute, but it was actually in place the whole time. We just didn't hear him the first time. So with that being said, I'm going to invite you to come. And don't forget, Making Marriage Meaningful, this coming Saturday, I have the honor and privilege of stepping in for one Apostle Whitlow who will be going into the state of Texas. And I'm going to ask Apostle Whitlow that you would give the information for the church that you'll be preaching at. I would love for some of these the people that are on our social media as well as our radio programming to take a moment if they live in the tech Dallas, Texas area to come and to support and say hi. Say, I'm so-and-so. I hear you on the pastor's corner all the time, or I hear you on making marriage meaningful. I'm happy to have finally met you. Say something, not something, something. Okay? So, Apostle Willow, give us the information. Actually, this weekend, I'm not in Texas this weekend. I will be in Walterboro, no. South Carolina. At okay, I'm sorry. Healing. That is 2107 Hampton Street, Walterboro, South Carolina. This Saturday evening at 6 p.m. This Saturday oh evening, 6 p.m., it is Founders Week, third year celebration. This is my spiritual daughter, Pastor Belisha uh, Williams, and that is Interhealing Deliverance Ministry, 2107 Hampton Street, Walterboro, South Carolina. In my understanding, there will be an ordination included, and that's what uh, my daughter wanted me to preach. So meet me there because God is going to move in Jesus' name. Next week, Friday, I will be in Texas, and I will share that information if the Lord says the same next week, Thursday night, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Amen. Well, we've had a great time. Thank you all who have come in and participated. We're going to release you now. Thank you for listening to the Pastor's Corner. Sister Kimmy Kim, hit that track. Have a great night, everybody. I've been burdened and I've been tried. I've been hurting with pain inside. I've had trouble on every hand. So many days I could barely stay My hands got tired of holding on Felt like I just could not go on Every time I almost let go God has kept me Every time I almost let go God has kept me There's been times when I could not see had to cry myself to sleep I've had people to walk away I've been put down for my mistakes And there have been times when I felt alone I've had to walk some lonely roads But every time I almost let go God has kept me And every time I almost let go God has kept me No
Time I almost let go. God has kept me. 